Spain is one of Europe's best countries to visit for theme parks and roller coasters. You'll find 55 coasters here, and among those are some of my favorite rides on the continent. I had the opportunity to visit Spain on my most recent trip across Europe, and while there, I got to see five different theme parks. In order, these include Tibidabo in Barcelona, Porta Ventura and Ferrari Land in Salou, and Parque Warner Madrid, as well as Parque de Atracciones de Madrid, of course, in Madrid. Now that I've ranked my favorite rides and coasters at each of these parks individually, it's time that I come out with a list of my favorites throughout the entire country. Let me know if there's any other coasters you would throw into the mix, and with that being said, let's dive in. Number 15, Cora Caminos Bip Bip at Parque Warner Madrid. Kicking things off with a string of awesome family coasters, this one at Parque Warner is an epic ride for its size. Literally just 52 feet tall and 37 miles per hour, yet it packs a punch many larger coasters lack. It's paced very well, has a few pops of airtime, and is about as smooth as it gets. If you're looking to build your way up to some of the park's bigger rides, Cora Caminos Bip Bip is a great place to start. Number 14, TNT Trendy Lamina at Parque de Atracciones de Madrid. This is an extremely similar coaster to the last one, except it's built by Gerslauer instead of Mock Ride. That said, it has virtually identical stats, is equally as well paced, and is just as smooth. The layouts are absolutely different on these two, but when you ride each of them, you might not even notice it. These are fantastic rides for what they are. Number 13, Montaña Rusa at Tibidabo. This small park signature attraction is located way atop a mountain like the rest of the park. The view is no doubt one of my favorite elements of this ride, as you get an incredible overlook of Barcelona out in front of you. But it's also remarkably smooth and well paced, which is strange since this is an older Vacoma coaster. Whatever they did right this time, I commend them for it, and I think Tibidabo has something great going for them with Montaña Rusa. Number 12, Stampeda at Puerto Ventura. Let's up the intensity with our first and only wooden coaster to make this list, and that's the two-track racing experience of Stampeda. Right off the bat, dueling the other train is the single biggest highlight with this attraction, as it wouldn't be nearly as good without the interactivity. The layout is solid too, though, with some nice sustained lateral forces and a few mild bursts of airtime. I do feel that Spain should have a more impressive wooden coaster in their lineup, but they do make up for it in steel. Number 11, Tornado at Parque de Atracciones de Madrid. One of two suspended looping coasters ever built by Intamin, Tornado is a fun, interesting ride, but I do get why they didn't build more of these. With so much competition, especially from B&M, these things are a little janky and the layouts don't seem fully fleshed out. However, there are some highlights, namely the three inversions, with the last corkscrew being an absolutely awesome moment. Definitely a fun ride, but I think I would have expected it to make the top 10 for sure. Number 10, Tarantula at Parque de Atracciones de Madrid. I always enjoy family spinning coasters for what they are, but Tarantula is by far the best of all of them. Part of that is because because it's hardly a family coaster at all. It actually spins a lot more than you'd expect, and some of its drops are huge. The only thing I don't enjoy so much are the bombardment of mid-course brake runs, but I understand that they're there to increase capacity and keep the lines moving. Number 9, Shadows of Arkham at Parque Warner Madrid. Here in America, B&M mass-produced Batman clones all across the Six Flags parks, and it became so popular that the layout even made its way to some non-Six Flags properties. I know some people like to give these rides a hard time because of how common they are, but in defense of these things, they're so awesome, there's a reason they caught on, plus it's not common at all in Europe. During a short 2700 foot circuit, riders will flip upside down five times all while hanging beneath the track. I love how fast paced these coasters are and I personally don't see myself ever getting tired of them. Number 8, Dragon Con at Puerto Ventura. From a popular b and model to a not so popular one, Dragon Con makes up part of the five sit down looping coasters they ever installed. With eight inversions, this thing had more inversions than any roller coaster in the US until 2019, which is remarkable considering the fact that it opened in 1995. Speaking of which, I found Dragon Con to be running very well well for its age, which made it a lot easier to appreciate its elements. That said, I think I did expect it to be a little more forceful than it was, as all the other B&M sit-downs I've ridden really caused you to gray out. Still an awesome ride though. Number 7, Superman La Atracción de Acero at Parque Warner Madrid. I personally did not expect Superman to be my favorite B&M looping coaster in Spain, but what do you know, this thing ran even more intense than Dragon Con. It does have one less inversion with 7, but the sequencing is just as strong, and I love how this ride is a handful of airtime hills which are unusual for a floorless coaster. You've also got to love having your feet dangle. For me, this is absolutely one of the best B&M floorless coasters. The only knock on it is that it is a little shaky. Other than that though, I don't have many bad things to say about it. Number 6, Abismo at Parque de Atracciones de Madrid. Mauer Skyloop coasters were already awesome rides before the extension, but Abismo is the only one to feature additional elements. I love how it diversifies the forces so much more, with airtime complementing the hang time and positive Gs beautifully. Plus, you can't talk about these Skyloop coasters without mentioning that wicked double inverting roll at the top. 
Few roller coasters still freak me out, but Abysmo is definitely one of those rides. Number 5, Furious Baco at Portaventura. Of all the unique coaster types in Spain, Furious Baco might be the most unorthodox as it's the only intimate wing coaster in the world. If that wasn't enough, it's also one of only two wing coasters out there with a the launch, and that is one of the most incredible bursts of acceleration I've ever experienced. Following that, the ride doesn't exactly do a whole lot, but the sheer sense of speed is amazing and I love that inversion towards the end. For how short of a layout this is, Furious Baco packs in an adrenaline rush that few coasters can counter with. Number 4, Stuntfall at Parque Warner Madrid. The Vacoma Giant Inverted Boomerang wasn't a new experience for me going into Stuntfall, but I imagine for most people who ride it, it will be. Not only are they extremely rare, but for how much enthusiasts tear apart regular boomerangs, these things are a stark contrast ride experience-wise. You're looking at two side-by-side 177-foot-tall -side vertical spikes, whose purpose is to propel riders forwards and backwards through three stupidly intense inversions. It almost looks sped up how fast the train goes through some of these elements, and when you're on it, you'll definitely feel all of that power in the form of immense positive g-force. It does take a lot out of you, especially if it's a hot day, which it tends to be often in Madrid. Therefore, it's not my favorite coaster to marathon, but a ride every now and then will leave you absolutely shook. Number 3, Shambhala at Puerto Ventura. Any of these top three I could understand being someone's number one coaster in Spain, and in Shambhala's case, it's because this is a textbook perfect roller coaster to the general public. It's super tall, super fast, super smooth, and packed full of elegant floater airtime hills. Plus, it just looks absolutely awesome. It's so good that Shambhala is able to appeal to the diehard enthusiasts looking for the most intense experiences too. This coaster may not be that, but there's no denying that it's remarkably enjoyable and one of the best hyper coasters in Europe for sure. Number 2, Red Force at Ferrari Land. Remaining in the same resort, we have the tallest and fastest roller coaster anywhere on the continent. This thing is a stat monster, but does its ride experience also live up to the hype? For me, 100% absolutely yes. It is necessary that you go in with expectations that Red Force is over incredibly fast, but while it lasts, it's a rush unlike any other coaster in Europe. With one of the fastest launches in the world at 111 miles per hour and a top hat that stands 367 feet tall, this is a beast of a ride and to me the second best coaster in Spain. But personally, it was still nowhere close to reaching the number one position because that honor deservingly goes to Batman Gotham City Escape at Parque Warner Madrid. This is one of the newest roller coasters in the country opening up earlier this year. It was the first time this park received a big new coaster since it opened in 2002 and to say it was worth it would be an understatement. In all my years traveling the world trying to find the world's best screen machines, I believe Batman is one of the few that combines every aspect of what makes a good roller coaster. The forces are everything you'd expect from an intimate ride, the layout and positioning of the elements are brilliant, and I was taken aback by the theming which rounds out a full package ride experience. Batman Gotham City Escape is in my opinion a 10 out of 10 perfect roller coaster, which is why it had to take the gold medal for Spain. With that, thank you all so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please feel free to give it a like and subscribe so you don't miss any content like this in the future. And until next time, I'll see you all very soon. Bye guys.